Uh, five years ago, you were in the same position at Wembley, same setting as we are tonight. What is the differences, similarities? Then, of course, the Dortmund manager, I know that. But expectation and going into the game, your position at the club. Well, first of all, it's a, the massive difference is that I had really... Um, a Champions League fan is really big, eh? it's really big, and um, as I think as a, as a manager, it's, you have a lot of things to do in the, prepara in the preparation for a Champions League final, a few things in training, but mostly the things in, in being convinced, being cool, being calm, calm whatever you want. Um, I'm pretty sure I was much more excited that time. I, that's how it always was in my life. I never expected um, that, that these kind of good things will happen to me. Not that I think a lot of good things happen to me, but going to a Champions League final as a manager is pretty difficult to, to, to do. And so it's maybe once in a lifetime chance. And um, that's what, how I remember that what was how it felt that time. Um, but we played a fantastic game, actually, against an unbelievably strong side. And um, after the game, I, I knew that I want to have this opportunity again. It took a while, but now I'm here because my boys gave me that chance again. And um, I'm really happy being here with this group of players. They fought so unbelievable hard for this and I really think they deserve it to be here and it's, it feels good. I'm really proud of them already and now let's play football. Let's take the question from Gentleman in Black here. Hi, Jürgen. I'm Richard Martin from Reuters. Um, I wanted to ask about your opinion of Zinedine Zidane. A lot of people say that he doesn't have much tactical knowledge. He's only been a coach for two and a half years. And I wanted to think, ask how different it is to be the coach of Liverpool with this group of uh, players that you have and the kind of real elite players that Zidane has, what the different things that a coach has to think about. If a lot of people think that Zinedine Zidane has not a, a lot of knowledge in tactical things, then, because a lot of people think the same about me, that would be really funny if two coaches are in the final and have no clue about tactics. <laughs> what would that say about the game? Eh? So, um, since he's done, how I said it before, um, was one for me one of the best five players all time in football. And now, he's, since two and a half years or so, he's, I'm longer at Liverpool than he's manager of Real Madrid, and he can win third time the Champions League. That never happened before in a manager's career. So, either way, he has any deal with anybody, or it's really, or he's brilliant. And I, unfortunately, have to expect that he's brilliant, like he was as a player. And um, this group of players, together with him, obviously work like a clock from Switzerland. Uh, and um, that's how it is. So I saw him, I saw his team playing and uh, a lot of times, meanwhile, how you can imagine, it's just fantastic football. Uh, and it's in the moments organized when it needs to be organized and it's kind of chaos when it needs to be kind of chaos. And that, and that all world-class players, I thought it's a good idea. But it's football and so that's still an opportunity for the other team as well and that's enough for me. But I think Zinedine Zidane was his whole life a fighter when you are grown up in, in Marseille, in the area where he's grown up and have this kind of career. And you need to be a fighter. Only when he was a player, it didn't look like that he needs to fight because he was so much better than all the rest. But he's a fighter. And I saw in his face when somebody asked him in a press conference about the hunger of us or of Real Madrid, the guy who asked it made him already angry. Yeah. The same would happen to me, and I'm grown up in a small village in Block Forest. So um, all is different, but we are both here. And um, yeah, so now let's do what we are paid for. Let's prepare our team and um, let's play the best game we can play. Take a question from the very back here. The last row, last row. Uh, Martin Sam with the Daily Mail. Uh, Jurgen, 
at some stage tomorrow it is going to start really sinking in with the players, whether it's on the journey to the stadium, that this is the Champions League final, if it hasn't sunk in already. At what point does the experience that Real Madrid have had, having been here twice before, how much difference can that make? Or how can I know that? Mm. I've never been twice in a row in a Champions League final. So, um, it, yes, as I said before, experience is very important. And I'm, I'm really, I'm pretty sure that in a second before the game, Real Madrid will be more confident than we are. But it's not a problem because the game doesn't end in that second. It only starts. And, um, and we have, we had now two weeks to prepare that game and we have, it's, everything is clear when we made the analyze. Then you see Real Madrid playing in different games against other players, teams, and you think, wow, they are really strong. But they never played us. That's another part of the truth. And, um, and we are Liverpool, and not only a really good football team, we have all as well in uh, this club has in its DNA that they can really go for the big things. Nobody expected us to be here, but we are here because we are Liverpool. And that's because we. We, we had the, the, the games we had in the Champions League. That's the most exceptional run to a final with the most goals and ever. We, that's, I cannot believe that it's true, but it's us. We, we scored the most goals. We had exceptional results away at home, all that stuff. So um, the experience they have is a big advantage, 100%, to feel more confident, whatever. But in the game, the experience doesn't help all the time. We have to make it as difficult as possible for them. What is difficult is enough for us, but that's the plan, of course. We cannot try to, to, to fight on their level. But tactics in football are there to bring a better opponent on your level. <laughs> and when they're on your level, then you can beat them. So, but that's um, hard to do, but I think it's worth a try. OK, in the corridor here in the middle, in blue. Hi, Jürgen. I just wanted to ask you about that. In your very first press conference as Liverpool manager, you said that if you played teams on your level that you could kill them. Um, and we've seen this Liverpool team do that time and time again. As this team has got better under your leadership, I'm just wondering, have you changed the philosophy and how might that look against Real Madrid? If we change the philosophy since I'm in, or what? First of all, my English was not that, not that good that time, so I should delete the word killed um, to make life uncomfortable, maybe I would prefer meanwhile. Um, but yeah, my philosophy, I never thought about my philosophy. I'm, I'm pretty sure I said that in the first press conference as well, because I never thought about my philosophy. I only thought about the game and the, the, the things I, we, we, we probably need in a game. Um, so. We adapted constantly to the level, to the, to the next level. The, gave, the players gave us the opportunity to. So we always tried to play the football, the players, which is the best for the players. That's how it is. So, and um, in this moment, we think the kind of football we play is exactly the football we should play to be as successful as possible. And we will adapt again to the level and quality of Real Madrid tomorrow. We cannot and we don't want to ignore that. We are really uh, interested in their skills and um, that's how the analyze um, has been. And um, so now we should be prepared because we don't have a lot of time anymore. And um, a little session tonight and then we will show what we what we learned from all the things we knew, we know meanwhile about Madrid. So it's it's possible. Eh? It's just possible. And um, but I really believe in using first of all your own strength, and then um, adapt to whatever the opponent is asking you for. But that's exactly 50-50. Okay, we'll go here, this side, right side, the second row. Yes, you can give the kick. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Hello, Mr. Klopp. Alejandro Rosa, Revista El Día. Um, first, uh, congratulations, because I think you did a fantastic job in Liverpool in the last year. So my question is very simple. For you, what's the most important strength of your group, of your team? 
the spirit, 100% the spirit which we created during that, during that season. Uh, nine months ago when we started it, we were already a good football team, but um, meanwhile the boys are ready for the big things. That's how it is because they, we, we didn't, maybe we, a few of us dreamt of being in the final, but that it will happen and it's possible that happened through the season, but only because of the performances we, we, we showed in different games and that created a special spirit and you, you, you saw that. Um, in all the games, in the last few games, and uh, now we are here. That's our biggest strength for sure. The lady in the middle here, please, with red. Yes. Hi, Jürgen, Francesca, benvenuti from Media Set Italy. Uh, two questions in one uh, regarding uh, Mohamed Salah. Can you tell us exactly, I mean, if he will stop his fast for Ramadan? And secondly, do you think he's ready to break uh, bipolarism between Cristiano Ronaldo and Leo Messi? Does it depend on winning the Champions League and being in the middle of these two huge figures, f uh, figures of uh, international football? Question number one. Um, religion is private, how I understand it. So, nothing to say about that, but all fine. You will see him out there afterwards in training. He's full of power and um, whatever you need to be um, the day before a final uh, or before a football game in general. The other thing is um, if he can do what? Break in between Messi and Ronaldo. But it's not important in the moment and it's not, no manager is interested in that. He, I'm interested in, in performing and the, the, the Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo deserve all the, the, all the, the, the praise, all the, 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 the things they won in the past because they were constantly over years on that level. And now they are 30-something, um, still in a fantastic shape. Both scored still an unbelievable number of goals and now everybody's waiting for the next one. If Mo can go there, we will see in the next years. He has fantastic potential and yeah, this season was exceptional, unbelievable so far. One more game to go, um, but the season was still outstanding. The next few years will show if he can do something similar, but it's not that easy because otherwise a lot more players would have done it. Um, these two are the most consistent players on the highest level in the last 10 years, maybe longer, 12, 13 years, and that makes them really special. But Mo had a good start, and then we will see what will happen in the next few years. We will take the last two questions because we run out of time. The gentleman here in the, in the middle, in the the orange shirt here, yes. Hi, Jürgen. John Murray from the BBC. It's often said before matches like this, big matches, that it's the coach's job, the manager's job to take the pressure off his team. Do you agree with that? And yeah. if so, what sort of things, what's, what are the details in that regard that you've been doing this week to do that? Nothing special in this week. It's only that the thing is that we have an early agreement in the sea and when we started working together, I am responsible for the defeats. The boys are responsible for all the things we win. So they have nothing to lose. They can win. They can try to win. And if they don't win, I responsible for that. That's how I see it, 100%. So that's the, the big deal. And all the rest are small things. Um, we, work on, we worked on the things we are good in. We spoke about the things, but at the end, the main, the main message was always um, we, all the things we worked on since we are together were actually made for being used in a game like the game tomorrow. That's the only reason for doing it, being prepared for these really big moments. And it's all about football. And I think most of the players will be a little bit nervous tomorrow and before the game. It's a completely normal feeling. And then first whistle and then do what you are best in, play football, fight with your mates, <laughs> shoot, strike, cross, make headers, bicycle kicks if you want, or if you have the opportunity, do all these things, um, what you always want to do in a football game, because it's, a foot, it's only a football game, a big one for sure, but it's a football game. So we tried to deal with it as normal as possible. And so far, it worked out. So oh, the last one, and thank you for your understanding.
Jürgen Martin Einstein from ESPN. I, I know. <laughs> I remember. I know. I know. Your voice. I know. I know, I know. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get better. Huh? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won't. I was born like this. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. My, my mother was surprised uh, because as a baby. When you were two going, years old, you had that voice already. They were scared of me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I would have Sorry. been. Okay. Sorry. Um, I, I want to ask you about uh, something that uh, Real Madrid has used in, in the last finals as, as a very powerful uh, club. They are probably one of the best benches. Uh, you can expect uh, most of the players that they have in the bench, they will have be starters anywhere. Uh, you guys, uh, the, the, you, you propose a very energetic and a very high pace uh, game, and they, they do so as well. Uh, how do you do to, uh, do you have the antidote, or, or how do you cope with a, a high pace game and not having the same quality on the bench? Well, oh, that's what we do the whole season pretty much already since we have all the injury. We had unbelievable quality on the bench for a long part of the season. Probably nobody has the same, but it's the same quality as Real Madrid, but that's because Vasquez and Asensio are really young and already outstandingly good. So, and then whoever will sit next to them has big, big quality, no doubt about that. So, but it's not about comparing the, 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 all the, the the good things of Real Madrid with our things, we are completely fine with what we have. We have the best bench we had for for weeks um, or months tomorrow night. So we are um, in a much better position than weeks ago and we had to go the way this team had to play. 11, 12 players had to play the last six or eight games themselves, not because the others are not good enough, but we had no chance really to change because of position, stuff like that, and they went through it. So we are as fresh as we can be after these two weeks. Fitness, whatever, will not be an issue for tomorrow. And playing a final and uh, to win a final, each team in the past needed a bit of luck. So that's what we need for sure tomorrow as well. Last year, the final, the red card for Juventus Turin was in favor for, for of course, for Real Madrid, stuff like that. And um, we need to be ready for all, for all the, the challenges in the game and don't, we will never compare anything what they have and we don't have. We really feel in a good position. We really are, um, are, are fine with our tools, with the things we have and we want to use them and don't think about what the other team has. Maybe a few clubs still have better, um, um, better things than we have. They are not in the final. We are. So uh, and we, we did it our way and we want to do it our way again. And then we will see what it leads to.